Sarah Proves is a blog that is kinky, and on YouTube it gets kind of thinky. You know, Sarah is the best when your mind gets undressed. So my loves, settle down, grab a drinky. Hello, my darlings. This is Rex Regine, but you can call me Sir. I run the Tumblr blog, Sir Approves. That's one word, no fucking hyphens, as we have discussed. Um, a couple of things I'd like to mention just to get us started here. Uh, first of all, I do apologize for my absence last week and, of course, uh, during conversation and not posting over the week. Um, a bit of a family issue needed tending to and uh, I do apologize uh, part of it was me being completely off the grid and another part of it um, was quite simply uh, brain space so I am very sorry and I do love you all I thank you for being with me uh, through this time I know that uh, I'm not going to go into detail what happened why this and why that just know that um, I am never ever gone for too long it takes a lot more than that to get rid of me so, there's that is our first thing. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank our UK darling for another brilliant introduction to the show. Uh, there is much more to come from her. Um, I thank you very much also for the outpouring of support and the love of her voice and of her talent. It means a lot to, to me. Um, <laughs> this is going because of the nature of the channel, this is going to sound weird, but it means a lot to me to expose a young girl <laughs> and to get her uh, some of the credit that she so justly deserves. So from all of us, the whole Sir Approves world, uh, we would like to say thank you very much, UK darling, for that uh, wonderful introduction and for everything to come. The other thing I have to mention is Facebook. Fucking Facebook. Let's talk about it for just a second. I got off of a 30-day block on Facebook. Uh, and as soon as... Uh, let's start with that. And I, I got on, put on that block because I something was flagged as me posting nudity. Something that I have never posted on Facebook. Something that I never would post on Facebook. I have more style than that. And I have more class than that. Uh, nonetheless, it got something I flagged and, and uh, taken down. I, put, I was put on a third day block. My first day back, I made a post, whole words, no photos, that was, uh, oh, well, I'm finally out of Facebook jail. I hope everyone's doing well. You've missed a couple episodes of the show. Here's a link to my channel. It's good to be back. I hope everyone is fantastic. Blah, 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 blah. And within seconds, it got taken down as not meeting Facebook terms. And I'm now on a 30-day block again. I emailed, I messaged, but uh, if any of you fuckwads from Facebook are listening, which you're probably not because you're a bunch of twats, um... I'd like to have my Facebook back. Thank you very much. And it's not that important to me, by the way. You are not that important to the world to be uh, judging what I put up and what I don't uh, within the realms of common decency, obviously. So Facebook, I'd like to say, um, fuck you and uh, fuck your mother. So let's get into the question tonight. Oh, and by the way, the average human has an attention span of eight seconds. So I just wanted to know that, I just wanted you to know that you're doing really, really well right now. So now here's the point where you're going to pause. You're going to go get a drink and we are going to dig into tonight's episode. Well, welcome back. Well, it looks like you had one on the way. Settle down. Here we go. Let's, I have all these new questions. I could just go right in. Uh, where's the one that I wanted to tackle? It was on our last show, which is something uh, that I found to be quite amusing. The show, not this question. Uh, 
something well worth looking at. I don't know, the views on that one were rather low, so uh, I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but please go check the video that says um, answers to my ask box in real time. I'm going to have a sip of water, and we are going to get this show started. Settle in, baby girl, we've got a lot to talk about. That was one noisy ass sip of water. Now, here is our question sent to us from Anonymous. Such a common name these days. Hello, sir. Any advice for subs with learning difficulties and or anxiety? I have an information processing difficulty, which often means I'm slow to respond to questions, and it takes me a while to process language, like commands, for instance. Being emotionally and physically overwhelmed makes it worse. How can I make sure a Dom won't misinterpret this as reluctance or brattiness or break the flow of a scene? Well, we have a couple of facets here. Now, this is, as I said, is one that uh, was addressed very briefly, but I wanted to go back to it because uh, it's, while it, it seems very specific to this person, uh, I think it has some broader base appeal. Any advice for subs with learning difficulties and or anxiety? Let's start with learning difficulties and anxiety. I could go on and on. Now, please don't think me um, insensitive because I am most certainly not. Anxiety is something that we claim quite often. I have anxiety. Well, if you have it, get rid of it. That's essentially it. Think of the wording. Think of the phraseology that we used when, 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 use when, we, when we talk about a problem. I have anxiety. Well, you need to release the anxiety. That needs to go away, right? You can't just lose it because anything... If, something, if you, you say you lose something, well, then, then you're always looking for it again, right? Anything you lose, you go looking for. You, you think about that. Think about that with anything. Think about that with weight loss. Uh, I've lost 15 pounds. Well, that means you're going to go looking for it again, aren't you? You've released 15 pounds. It's gone forever. So that's how we need to start to look at anxiety. What we need to realize about anxiety, while it is real and it is crippling, is that it's not as real as you think it is. And this video, despite... Um, you know, the perverted nature of my blog and of other episodes of the show, I really would encourage you to get somebody who has anxiety to listen to this, because this is very important. The anxiety that we have, the anxiety that we face, is made up by us. I'm not belittling it, just hear my words. It's made up by us. It doesn't really exist. That is to say, if two people were facing the same situation, let's say that uh, we're going to you know, put out a candle. We're going to put out a candle by licking our finger and thumb and putting it out. Now, two people are standing there, and this is the challenge before them. One person has no anxiety about it. The other person has great anxiety about it. Now, what's the difference? The situation is the same. The challenge is the same. So putting a candle out with your thumb and forefinger does not cause anxiety. You cause anxiety. Now think about that. It's in, and this is a question of responsibility, which is why so many people try to uh, shirk the idea or to push it off. The same situation presented to several people. Some people will have anxiety, some people will not have anxiety. So the anxiety is created by the person, not the situation. The situation remains whatever the situation is. The anxiety is created by ourselves. And we have to struggle with that. And we have to fight that. We need to realize its place, though. And I think once we understand the place of anxiety, we can put it to rest a little bit. 
Now, don't get me wrong, there are some people who will never be able to live a, uh, a healthy, what would be quoted, normal life uh, without medication and therapy to help uh, control these chemical and psychological issues that they have. But for most of us, we've used the term anxiety so broadly across our social structure uh, that we don't even know what it is. Most people would say, I have anxiety. Well, you could be a little nervous because you don't know what it's like for someone who is traumatized by anxiety. You know, there's always someone with a worse problem than you. So uh, we need to put it in its place. And I want you to understand why it's there. Now, a long time ago, we, uh, we didn't have YouTube. We, didn't, we couldn't order our collars online. Back in my day, we had to make our collars ourselves. We couldn't go on them interwebs and just order up any kinds of collars and floggers and widgets and widgets. We had to make them out of horse hide after we killed the horse ourselves. <laughs> I'm so terribly sorry that that I'm just <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Grandpa didn't even get an introduction. Oh, that I got myself with that one. How ridiculous is that when you can make yourself laugh, when you can actually surprise your own brain? Anyway, a long time ago, we had to fight animals, we had to fight other people, we had to find food, we had to defend our selves in a much more violent way. Now, anxiety, that feeling of this is not a good idea and this is going to be dangerous for me, really came into play. That feeling of anxiety, if I were to walk through the woods and I were to see a grizzly bear cub, for me to have anxiety, to have a very, very strong physical reaction to seeing that cub, because it lets me know that there is a mother around and I need to get the fuck out of here. Now that is reasonable. That is a survival tool. I am in very, very great danger in this situation. The problem with the way that we have come along as people is that we feel that same level of anxiety over talking to a girl, telling a man that you love him, over expressing our feelings, over driving a car, over walking into a supermarket that we've never been in before. So we have these same levels of chemical release and worry that we did a million years ago, or 100,000 years ago, however it breaks down. That's 500,000, right in the middle. Perfect. We have that same release, but it doesn't do us that same justice because it's not about protecting our lives anymore. It's about protecting our emotions, which in some ways is very, very important. But you cannot tell me that we deserve the same fear of a grizzly bear uh, well within range of attacking us, that we should have that same fear when we are... Um, trying to talk to a girl that we like or trying to tell a man our feelings. So we have to realize that anxiety, while it's not a false emotion, for lack of a better term, it is overblown. And we need to realize that. Sometimes we need to say, what is the reality of this? Let's say, for example, uh, let's say you and I are talking. And let's say things blossom. Now we're being hypothetical here. You have feelings for me and I have feelings for you. And you are terrified to say, I love you. Why? Why are you terrified? What is the worst thing that will happen? I would say, well, I thank you very much. And then not return the I love you. I mean, what is the worst thing that could happen? It certainly doesn't match being eaten alive by a grizzly bear. But yet the feeling is the same. 
So just remember, when it comes, when you are anxious about something, just remember to put it in its place, to really take a look at the harm. And what we realize as we start to look at our anxieties is that the benefits of not letting the anxiety win far outweigh the uh, protection of letting the anxiety win. Sometimes we have to fly. Do you know if you've ever heard that saying? It's one of my favorites, uh, where she says, what if I fall? And he says, oh, my darling, what if you fly? So keep that anxiety in its place. I could go on for another half an hour about anxiety. Uh, I'm not belittling it, but we can start to control ourselves better when we can understand what is happening. Right? We need to constantly be growing ourselves, constantly learning ourselves, because it makes us a better person for ourselves and a better person for everyone around us. So that's our little bit about anxiety, and I would recommend highly that you share that uh, with people struggling with anxiety. You don't just tell them you found the video. Don't tell them that you, know, you subscribe and that you go to my blog and that late at night you play with your pussy and think about me and listen to my voice while you're in the tub. You don't have to say any of that stuff, even though I know it's true. You don't have to say any of that. Just say, hey, I found this great video. This guy's brilliant, and I'm sure he's very handsome, too. Now, moving on in this question. I have an information processing difficulty, which often means I'm slow to respond to questions, and it takes me a while to process language. I do not believe that. That's right, you heard me. I do not believe that. I do not believe that you have an information processing difficulty. I believe that you have a... Um, how do I put this? A take-your-time ability. I, do, I, I don't think it's a difficulty. I think it's you just process things in your own time. And when your brain is ready, then you will make a move. I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. I don't think it's a difficulty. I don't think it's a hindrance. And I don't think it makes you any different than anyone else. Everyone will process things at their own level. And if it takes you five minutes to comprehend something and it takes someone else 10 seconds to comprehend it, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person or it's a difficulty or a disability. That person who takes five seconds to process something, I will, I'm willing to bet, makes awful decisions quite a bit. So don't be too hard on yourself about that. And don't call things disabilities um, when they're not. Let's see here. I'm slow to respond. Like commands, for instance. I guess maybe I don't understand that. If I were to say, take your panties off, baby girl. Show daddy what's his. I don't think it would take you very long to uh, process that command. But then again, maybe you have never been with a person who actually cared for you, who owned you because they want to own you, because they want to protect you, because they want to love you and to cherish you. Maybe you've never been with someone like that, but I can guarantee you when you are with someone who wants to just possess you, not in a, in a domineering way, but in a loving, caring way, that when he says, bend over, baby girl, you're not going to take a long time to make the decision as to what to do. Being emotionally and physically overwhelmed makes it worse. Being overwhelmed is again something that we create ourselves. I know I am a victim of this myself. I'm a victim of myself. Therefore, I, I don't believe in victim mentality. I don't. There are awful things that happen and I'm not going to go into it. And please, again, I hate to have to preface things and say I'm not looking to offend anyone. Yes, there are some horrible, horrible, fucking disgusting things that happen in the world, but I'm not into the victim mentality. So when I say I'm a victim of this, I mean it's a self-inflicted victim. I am the attacker as well as the victim uh, of being overwhelmed. I let things build up too much. Uh, I, my, sh I feel my ship slowly sinking, and uh, I, you know, and I'm on the on the deck with a thimble trying to get the water out, and then that's my fault, because I don't take the time to step away, and it's, again, so it's a process, I'm not perfect, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty close to perfect, I'm pretty damn perfect, but I'm not perfect yet, so there's, uh, there's plenty to work on with me there, so being emotionally and physically overwhelmed makes it worse, being overwhelmed makes everything worse, 
when you are overwhelmed, is it, we're not even talking BDSM here, we're not talking about a relationship. When you are overwhelmed, you can get uh, the wrong text from the wrong person and it will sink your day. You will uh, cry or you will go blank because you are overwhelmed because your bucket is full and when what happens when you when the bucket gets too full well it starts to spill over right so every now and then we need to put those things where it belongs maybe it's a good workout you need maybe it's just time away maybe you need to just tell your friends look and and your friends a good friend a good, and a, certainly a good lover would respect this you know i just need a few days that's all just to myself i just need a few days and uh, a good lover, someone who cares about you, is, is would be quite fine with that. Uh, so don't let yourself get overwhelmed, and you won't have that problem. How can I make sure a dom won't misinterpret this as reluctance or brattiness or break the flow of a scene? How can you be sure a dom won't misinterpret it? Uh, you can't be. That's the short answer, because it's not up to you. Uh, if someone misinterprets something, it is because they have misinterpreted it, not because you have misrepresented it. And I will fall back to, I think, every video I've ever made about an open line of communication. You say, sir, master, daddy, whatever your dynamic, this is the issue that I'm having. I don't mean to be a brat. Uh... I don't mean to break the flow of a scene, but also I'm going to take I'm going to take a, a short rabbit trail here when we talk about the flow of a scene. Everybody wants it to be perfect, you know. We want to fuck like they do in the GIFs and um, or gifs, or whatever the hell you call them. Those things that I post all the time. We all want to fuck like that, and we do for the most part. Um, sometimes I've done things that have put those things to shame. But breaking the flow of a scene is, is, is part of being with someone who is understanding and who is loving and someone who is worth giving your body to. That's just the bottom line. Things are going to happen that are going to break the flow of a scene. They are not going to all be... Poor. Look at... I strongly suggest, just for your own entertainment some night, if you're having a drink, oh, wait, you're having one now, look up uh, porn bloopers, and you'll see that it's it's not all that uh, that you see. You see a finished product. You see the 18 filters that you put on everything that's on Instagram. You don't see that person when they first wake up in the morning. So to break the flow of a scene, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm not being crude, but it's life. Uh, sometimes people are going to fart. Sometimes people are going to queef. Sometimes uh, things will be done that are too rough and we have to pull things back in. Sometimes the, uh, the CD starts skipping. Uh, if you have children, you know, then maybe one of your kids gets up and is going down the hallway to get a drink of water and you have to, you know, shut the fuck up for five minutes. Or There are so many things that will break the flow of a scene that you need you need to be with somebody who really cares about you where that's not important where they realize that that's just life that's just the way life works and and that passion can be rekindled if you've got a you hear that those little footsteps going down the hall and then you go oh sh 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 sh. and you've got to wait five minutes and and if you're with somebody who loves you and you love them you will pick up that passion and you will start burning all over again it's not going to kill anything don't be too concerned with breaking the flow of a scene be natural the best experiences in your life romantically physically sexually emotionally and spiritually will be when you are just being, just existing. Those will be the best moments of your life. And I know we're at 24 minutes, and I know very few people will have made it this far. And if you have, I thank you very, very much for staying with me. I thank you for supporting the channel. 
I ask that you give it a thumbs up and a comment if you agree, if you disagree. Um, I hope this has helped you. I know anxiety is a very big issue in our modern society. Um, that, well, I just hope that I've helped somebody have a better life, which is all I hope for for any one of these episodes. At the end of the video, you will see all my contact information. Uh, if you would like to get a hold of me, I would be happy to hear from you. And until then, all of my best and all of my love, sir.